Hello everyone! What'll happen if you put a successful gamer, who leaves his opponents no chance in virtual battles, into a real-life criminal conflict? Today, we'll enter a territory of ruthless Asian crime and see how a simple cyber athlete stands up against it. The movie begins with a fight accompanied by a monologue. The protagonist leads his squad into battle. At great speed, the commander drives a pickup truck into a skyscraper, jumps out of it, and shoots almost an entire army. The guy gradually advances through the floors and methodically destroys the enemy. However, one of the fighters suddenly finds himself surrounded. Everyone advises the commander to abandon him, but the man heroically jumps to the aid of the hapless subordinate. While in the air, he throws a grenade and destroys the shooters with several bursts of fire. The trapped man is rescued. It's time to return to the primary mission again. Eventually, the team successfully fights back and advances to their goal, the bomb on the top floor. The commander sacrifices himself so that the hacker can disarm it in time. The last shot hits the captain right in the temple. Unexpectedly, it turns out that the battle and the heroic death occurred in virtual reality. The team discusses the victory and praises their leader for his courage. The guy's name is Quan Yu. They invite him to a party, but the guy's empty wallet disagrees with that plan, and he says he'll join them another time. Suddenly, his phone starts ringing. Quan's mother asks him to come home and turn off the stove. The woman works at the hospital and looks after the elderly. That evening, she plans to stay late at the clinic and asks the young man to quit playing video games. The mother clearly doesn't approve of her son's passion for virtual warfare, although she does speak warmly of him in a conversation with her patient. Quan doesn't listen and stays in the internet cafe. All of a sudden, another call rings next to him. This time, the phone is not his. The protagonist answers it anyway. At first, Quan refuses, but the girl offers a hefty sum as a reward. The guy agrees and goes to the indicated location. Upon arriving at the right apartment, he finds the door open. Quan rings the bell, but doesn't enter. There's no response. The protagonist then goes inside and finds himself in an empty apartment. Behind the semi-transparent glass of the shower cabin, he sees a girl. She asks the guest to leave the cell phone upstairs and pick up the money there as well. Quan goes up, leaving the cell phone on the bed, takes the money and leaves. At parting, he tells her exactly where to find the phone and warns the careless stranger that leaving the apartment door open is a bad idea. The next morning, Quan is awakened by the police, who break into his house. The officers unceremoniously restrain the gamer with his face against the floor. <laughs> For some reason, there's blood on Quan's hands and a blood-stained knife in the far corner of his room. The guy looks at all of this in shock and cannot understand what's happened. To the disapproving shouts and pokes of angry onlookers, the suspect is taken to the police station. They report about him on the news. It turns out that Quan used to be a member of the national taekwondo team, but dropped out because of a scuffle and became obsessed with virtual entertainment. The video game enthusiast is interrogated at the precinct. They quickly show him the evidence and ask a lot of questions. His mother's not allowed to see him. Quan is accused of murder, as his fingerprints and other traces are found at the crime scene. Quan, of course, denies his guilt. His mom, meanwhile, is trying to get the word out that her son is innocent. But all of this is in vain. No one believes her leaflets. All the DNA tests indicate that Quan is guilty. The gamer's mom goes to a lawyer named Min Chon Song and tries to convince the lawyer that he didn't kill anyone. But the man doesn't listen to her or pay any attention. The only advice the defender gives her is to plead guilty as soon as possible. The next episode shows the trial. As evidence, the prosecutor shows the camera footage of the protagonist leaving the building where the victim lived. <laughs> the audience gasps as they hear the gory details of the case. Quan himself sits in utter confusion. He tries to deny his involvement, but no one listens to him. The guy is called a video game addict who has lost the ability to distinguish between reality and fiction. The judge doesn't listen to the arguments of the lawyer and the defendant. He believes that Quan committed murder and abuse of a minor and sentences the gamer to life in prison. Quan will be kept in a maximum security prison with murderers and other dangerous criminals. The video game fan is taken to jail by bus. The kid doesn't want to get off, but a tranquilizer shot to the neck puts him to sleep. Quan wakes up on the cold cell floor. The doors open, and he heads to the dining hall. There he takes his food and sits down at a random table. He looks lost 
to say the least. During a walk outside, the guy keeps to himself and doesn't approach anyone. The prisoners first merely look at him, but then grab him and bring him to the local gang leader for interrogation. Quan tries to tell him what happened, but gets beaten up. The guards pay no attention to what's happening. Enraged, the guy throws himself at the leader, but they drag him away and beat him up again. The boss says that Quan should stop denying his guilt. Finally, the guards do intervene. However, it's the protagonist who receives the baton blows. Quan gets thrown into the punishment cell. After a month, the former gamer returns to the regular prison reality. Quan is walking down the corridor and notices that the prisoners are following him. He starts running away, but finds himself trapped. Madoksu's henchmen, armed with shivs, take him to an empty warehouse and lay him face down on the floor. The man says he can't stand being treated without respect. He promises to show Quan the consequences of such behavior. What happened next remains off screen. The guy, bloody and ragged, is taken by the guards to the punishment cell. It looks like Quan tried to cut his wrist with his own teeth. After a while, the guy's mother is allowed to see him. She comes with a lawyer. They're preparing for an appeal. The mother also tells Quan that he must pull himself together and move on with his life so that he can get out of prison someday. She promises to find a way to get her son out from behind the bars. The next day in the prison canteen, Quan eats alone, standing against the wall. After lunch, Madoksu and his six men beat him up again. This happens repeatedly. One day, an old man approaches Quan and shares his food. He says that the guy doesn't look like a killer and thinks Madoksu just wants to break him. Nonetheless, Quan doesn't crack under the gang leader's pressure. Time and time again, they throw him in the punishment cell and punch him in the face. But now, the guy trains and bears the blows with more dignity. Once again, Madoksu's gang tries to get the guy during his prison work. But this time, Quan is properly prepared. He made a slingshot and improvised arrows from things on hand. The hero successfully shoots off the attackers and eventually encounters the gang leader himself. The man is walking around the room with a huge wrench. Quan releases an arrow at him, gives him a couple of blows and knocks the man out. The convicts disperse, but the guards arrive. The protagonist is taken to the visit room. However, only the lawyer is inside. The guy's mom is nowhere to be found. She tried to help her son as best she could, but couldn't take it anymore and committed suicide. At least that's what the death certificate says. In despair and exhaustion, the guy falls asleep in his cell. Quan is devastated by the news of the death of his beloved mother. Morning arrives, and the guy goes out for a walk again. Madoksu's gang wants to attack him, but the guards intervene. The thugs riot and knock the guards to the ground. Alarms go off all over the area, but Quan ignores them and wanders idly amidst the sirens and the chaos around him. At that moment, Madoksu sneaks up behind him with a shiv. The boy notices him at the last moment, a sharp object in his hand as well. With a swing, he stabs the leader in the cheek. A guard notices this and aims his gun at Quan, demanding that he drop the weapon. The protagonist then stabs himself in the stomach with the shiv and falls to the ground. He and the other wounded are taken to the clinic. Quan opens his eyes and prepares to run. At this point, we are again shown the old man who sat down with him in the canteen. It turns out that he advised the hero on what to do to get a chance to escape. Quan swiftly and methodically knocks out the people escorting them. The driver and his guard in the front seat are the last ones standing. The ex-gamer threatens them with a syringe with sedatives and demands the keys. At that point, the driver turns the steering wheel and the car crashes into the concrete barrier. Quan manages to catch the bundle of keys in the air, frees himself, and literally falls out of the mangled car. In one of the nearby villages, he finds civilian clothes and escapes from the pursuit. On the highway, Quan sees a couple next to a broken car. The guy helps them fix the engine and asks his new acquaintances for a ride. They eagerly agree. The couple are going to an airport to fly to China. The car is stopped at a checkpoint but is quickly allowed to pass. Quan cleverly hides from the police on the back seat. At the airport, the couple bid Quan a warm farewell and give him their car. They bought it for next to nothing so that they could travel in comfort. In the car, Quan returns to the city, but now he's been wanted for two days. The guy's first destination is his lawyer's office. He waits for the defender, apologizes to him for the unexpected visit, and asks him for a shelter, because the gamer has nowhere to go. 
At first, the lawyer wants to call the police, but then changes his mind and makes coffee for himself and his guest. Quan tries to find out from him the contacts of the person who offered to provide him with an alibi. The lawyer says it was a joke from some kids. In reality, no one was willing to exonerate Quan. His mother found out about it and was very worried that she had given her son false hope. According to the lawyer, this is what pushed her to take the desperate step. He hands Quan his mother's beads. The protagonist once gifted them to his mother, and she loved them a lot. Afterwards, the lawyer advises the guy to turn himself in. Quan manages to escape through the window. He gets to his computer and Googles the details of his case. The guy checks his email and notices a mysterious video clip in one of the messages. In it, the presenter talks about the inconsistencies in the case. The main evidence against Quan is the dash cam footage from a parked car. It captures the gamer entering the house where his alleged victim lived. However, many other clips that could shed light on what really happened had somehow been lost. But then somebody once again directed the case in their favorable direction, and Quan received the undeserved sentence. It turns out that the anonymous hacker took the side of justice. He found out that Quan was in the murdered girl's apartment for only three minutes. During that time, Quan physically wouldn't have been able to do what he was accused of. Plus, there's a suspicious man among the victim's contacts. They met the night before at a club, but no one called the stranger in for questioning. Instead, the version with an unemployed gamer who had lost his mind worked for everybody. Quan leaves the cafe, wanting to meet the hacker at a diner the next day. Suddenly, a silent girl sits down at his table and hands him a ringing smartphone. On the other end of the line is another girl. She introduces herself as the mysterious hacker and says she changed the voice in the video to a male one so that no one would recognize her. She calls Quan Commander. Quan gets into a car with the tight-lipped girl and arrives at an unknown place. The hacker's base is located here. Her name is Mr. Harry. The girl orders groceries to be delivered to her home and can't communicate in person. Apparently, years of seclusion are taking their toll. Quan's possible savior prepares a meal for the two of them, and the pair eats enthusiastically. In the middle of the meal, Quan starts crying. The girl calls him again, saying that a certain squad is coming soon, and there's no reason for their commander to greet them in tears. At that moment, the doorbell rings. Three people enter the room, sit down at the table, and thank the hostess for the meal. Quan meets them with a frying pan, ready to attack. One of the three asks the protagonist to sit down and tells him that everyone is here to help him. He introduces those gathered, and they turn out to be Quan's teammates from one of his games. The unemployed guy in the cap is Yong Guru, a hacker and a support specialist in the game. Demolition in the red t-shirt is a sniper, and in real life, a movies and special effects expert. The long-haired guy with the shotgun in the game is the oldest in real life, a professor of architecture. Meanwhile, the police are questioning Quan's lawyer. The man doesn't reveal anything to them and leaves. He asks his informant for all the materials on the protagonist's case. He learns about Madoksu from the data. The team gets to work. The hacker searches the internet for details of what happened to Quan and reports everything to her comrades. She learns that many of the clues in the case were discovered suspiciously easily. She also has doubts about Quan's too swift arrest. On one of the recordings, she finds a suspicious truck with a fake brand name on the body. It had been parked outside the murdered girl's house for about an hour. The strange vehicle appears in other cold cases as well. The team decides to go to the junkyard to look for it. Quan takes demolition with them and finds the vehicle. There are people in suits hanging around it. When they drive away, the protagonist proceeds to follow their car. He leaves demolition to watch the truck. A car stops in the yard of one of the houses. An endless line of people carrying stuff proceeds inside the house. Quan seizes the moment and looks inside. Somebody has clearly been murdered here, and the group of men in hazmat suits are taking photos of the scene and mopping up all the evidence. Quan videotapes the whole cleanup. At the end, the dwelling is restored to its original appearance, as if nothing had happened. At that moment, Quan gets a call from demolition. He sees men in suits shoving a huge cello case into the back of the truck and then changing its brand. Commander orders his friend to go after the suspicious fan. Demolition tracks them down to a huge skyscraper. Quan arrives there as well. The guys cannot get inside. The security is too tight. The squad starts planning a night raid. The old man and Yang Guru disguise themselves as assemblers and infiltrate the skyscraper. Demolition, following the hacker's instructions, cuts the alarm wires. She's coordinating the operation from their hideout. The grandpa distracts the guards while his friend connects to the main server. 
Young Guru barely has time to download all the necessary data. Next, Quan enters the building. He uses the codes that his accomplices obtained. The cameras are jammed by the hacker. The hero sneaks into the apartment on the 13th floor and discovers a white case. Inside it is the body of a famous TV actor. The guys announce that he'll have visitors soon, so Quan closes the case and hides. Before his very eyes, the men construct a crime scene in the apartment with the necessary fingerprints and other evidence. There's a dead body floating in a glass container nearby. The liquid apparently prevents decomposition. The protagonist's lawyer is watching the scene on the monitor. The next morning, there is a news program on TV. The anchor reports that a popular actor has been killed by some insane lady. The next scene takes place in the lawyer's office. A dark-haired assistant comes to him and puts a flash drive on his desk. 173명, 무직자하고 비정규직. The lawyer asks her to wait for the right time and goes into a secret room. It opens only after the scanner reads the man's face. Inside, the man sits down behind a huge glowing desk. Hundreds of photos of different people appear on it. The lawyer inserts the flash drive, and the entire floor under his feet turns into a huge screen. Among the thousands of portraits, he chooses a girl and a guy, and then calls a reporter with a request to urgently publish some story. But the reporter refuses his request. The lawyer hits the floor violently and ends the call. We are then shown a team of fake delivery men who work for the lawyer. They arrive at the home of the young lady he had selected and say that they have brought a promo gift. Within a few moments, the girl passes out. The intruders take her hair, fingerprints, and other biometrics and then send this data to the center. Based on these prints, special gloves are made to fake the girl's touch. They are sent to the famous actor's house and the workers tag all the necessary objects with them. Meanwhile, the hero's team continues its investigation and tries to find out the source of these mysterious murders. Commander asks Mr. Harry to look for the girl's fingerprints. He believes she's the one they want to pin the crime on. Quan stole one of the objects from the apartment where the fake murder was staged. They can get the fingerprints from it. After a while, the search reveals the victim's address. The friends catch her at the hair salon. The old man deliberately sits down next to her and steals the girl's cell phone. Suddenly, an angry, big man bursts into the room and drags her outside. There, he beats up the girl and demands that she return the money she had borrowed. Quan drives him away. The next day, Commander listens to the young lady's conversations. The girl's mother scolds her for not being able to give money for her brother's needs. At the end of the conversation, they quarrel. At Mr. Harry's house, everyone is asleep, but Quan continues his surveillance. He hasn't slept or eaten all night, so as not to miss anything important. The guy guesses that Mr. Harry was the person who wanted to help his mom, but the girl modestly refuses to admit it and changes the subject. Suddenly, the phone of the potential victim, who is closely followed by Commander, receives a call. A woman's voice on the other end says that she has found the wallet and is ready to return it. Quan immediately recalls the time he himself was fooled by the same scam. He heard the same voice. Mr. Harry says to call whoever is trying to frame the girl and keep them on the line for three minutes to track them down. Quan picks up the phone, but the horrors of the last few months immediately come rushing back to him, and Commander freezes. That's when the hacker takes matters into her own hands. She activates the voice modulator and keeps talking to the criminal call center operator. This helps her get the address. Quan tries to rescue the girl and catches her on the street, but right out from under his nose, a motorcyclist dressed in all black takes her away. He's the one who drops off the fake prints at all the crime scenes. Commander quickly jumps into his car and begins his pursuit the police get on his tail. At the most crucial moment, the protagonist's old wreck of a car stops running in the middle of the highway. The cops surround him, but are hit by a truck that swiftly races through their convoy. This, however, doesn't help Quan. But it's not the servants of the law who kidnap him, but Madoksu and his accomplices. <laughs> the criminal leader starts shooting at the hero with miniature arrows from a self-made slingshot. The lawyer is watching the scene, grinning. The criminal puts projectile after projectile into Commander's body. He wants to leave a scar on his cheek and then kill him. Mr. Harry calls the cops and gives them a tip on the building where they are holding Quan. She introduces herself as a hostage and says they are about to kill her. SWAT teams cordon off the building, but they are ordered not to interfere. The hacker then pretends that she won't survive much longer. The police decide to storm the place. They catch those inside, while Quan manages to escape. The hacker picks him up in the old car though she barely knows how to drive. Madoksu catches up with the couple and threatens to kill Quan. At this point, the protagonist carefully escapes from the pursuit, but the hacker finds a bug on him. 
the tracking mechanism turns out to be hidden in the beads that the guy once gave to his mom, and now keeps for himself as a memento, at full throttle and with tears in his eyes. Commander throws the item out the window. Madoksu gets a call from his masters. They force the gangster to search for Quan Yu and set conditions. If the criminal completes the task, he'll be released. If he doesn't, he will go to jail. At their base, the squad is having dinner. The guys suspect the lawyer of being the mastermind behind the whole thing. Yang Guru is tinkering with electronics when Quan asks him to build a drone. The quadcopter is soon ready, and the team takes it on their foray to the lawyer's office. The quadcopter flies up to his window, filming everything, while a laser microphone allows them to hear the sound through the glass. The lawyer's assistant is talking on the phone. The contents of the conversation make it clear that both are involved in the ongoing injustice. However, the squad doesn't believe that all the operations were run from the tiny office. The drone flies around the building, scanning it with a special beam. Mr. Harry tries to hack into the server and steal the data, but it's too well protected. At this point, the lawyer's phone rings. His photos have appeared at the crime scene that he has been meticulously altering, and the fake evidence has been destroyed. Min Chan Song and his assistant carefully inspect the premises. All of the sinister couple's hard work has gone down the drain, so the lawyer decides to do it all over again, including taking new biomaterial from the victim. The clients who ordered the setup are not satisfied with the lawyer's work and tell him so directly. The team successfully disrupts the opponent's plans and upgrades Quan's car with a new powerful engine. The guys have mastered a variety of tactics and ruined the lawyer's business on all fronts. Blowing up his van, stealing fake evidence, and so on. Chan Song turns on the TV, where at this very moment there's a story about the TV actor's body that has been found. The clueless fake victim wakes up next to it, but Quan has managed to replace her with the daughter of the person who ordered the crime. Now the lawyer's in big trouble. He screwed up big time. At this moment, he receives a call from Commander. The lawyer has gone so long unpunished that he now thinks he can sell any story in the way that benefits him. He threatens Quan. The lawyer turns around and sees that his assistant has been knocked out by someone. He runs to his safe room, but inside it, Quan is already waiting for him. The hero brutally beats up the man who framed him. Afterwards, he gets into his enemy's computer and finds all the materials about his case. Suddenly, the villain comes to his senses. Quan almost kills him, but stops. The commander realizes that his squad needs help. Madoksu has captured the gamers and threatens to kill them. Quan wants to copy the data for his release onto a flash drive and leave to help his friends, but this would take half an hour. Commander threatens to kill the lawyer, but the latter assures him that even this won't stop the criminal mastermind. Quan knocks the lawyer out and heads out to save his friends. Madoksu shoots at the old man several times but misses. At that point, Mr. Harry throws herself at him and is taken away. Yang Guru tries to talk their way out of the situation, but the lights in the room suddenly go out. In total darkness, Quan takes out the whole gang, rescues his team, and runs with them to the car. Madoksu and his men give chase, but get stuck in an alley. A small army goes after Quan. The commander uses tricks straight out of Fast and Furious to get rid of the pursuers. The lawyer sends info to a news report that Commander is about to be caught and that he has kidnapped the daughter of the person who ordered the setup. In the report, they reveal the identities of the hero's entire squad as well. The team is made to look like a group of psychopaths. The chase continues. The lawyer has already received a triumphant phone call from the satisfied customer. However, Quan is not so easy to deal with. At one point, he drops his team off in a multi-story parking lot. The lawyer orders Madoksu to kill them. The team sneaks into the TV station and occupies it to give the hacker time to air her video investigation. Commander, Yang Guru, Demolition, and the old man distract the pursuers in an epic battle. <laughs> Suddenly, Mr. Harry is kidnapped by Madoksu. The entire squad is brought to the floor by the arriving police officers, but Quan gets on the villain's tail. During the chase, he takes the hacker to his car through the window, while the criminal is smashed into a parked vehicle. Quan lets Mr. Harry out and heads for the TV station. He's followed by multiple police cars. At the end of the ride, he gets out of the car with his hands up. His team is arrested. The lawyer rejoices, but not for long. It turns out that all this time his data was being copied to the flash drive that Commander left behind. At that moment, the hacker launches her transmission on all channels. 
In it, she explains how the client, a wealthy businessman, was covering up for his daughter who killed the TV star. It also describes the role of the lawyer and his assistant in the scheme. Quan was also framed to cover up a crime of some big shot's rich son. At the end, the protagonists celebrate their victory. Commander thinks about his mother. As always, we've left the name of the movie in the description of the video. If you want the recaps to come out more often, please give this video a like and press the bell button. And lastly, let us know in the comments, what Korean movie would you put on par with the best Hollywood action movies?